This is the new Xpeng G9 and it's a bit of a surprise. Up to this point, practicality and affordability have been key selling points for the Chinese brand. But with this latest model, Xpeng has decided to go a little more upmarket and do battle with the luxury SUVs of this world, whilst undercutting their prices. So have we reached peak SUV? Can this really compete with luxury legacy SUVs? And do we really need all the bells and whistles and gadgets and gizmos? Well, there's only one way to find out. This is the Xpeng G9 and this is fully charged. Okay, so you're probably wondering about all the gadgets and gizmos in this car, but we'll come to that a bit later on because I want to start off with a question. Why, when the market is so saturated with not only SUVs, but luxury SUVs, did Xpeng come to market with yet another one? Now for me, Xpeng is known as being practical, affordable and stylish. And so with the G9, they've kind of gone in a slightly different direction and gone after that luxury route. They're going after the legacy automakers such as Range Rover, the Porsche Cayenne. And in the domestic market, the Neo ES7, for example. So for me, I'm a little bit confused as why Xpeng have gone in this direction with their new car. You know, I'm on a bit of a personal crusade. I think we should have more small cars. You look at cars like the Wuling Mini EV, which are outselling almost every other car here in China. So it does make you wonder why they're going in this direction and can they really compete with the other luxury automakers? We're going to find out today as we're driving out into the mountains. We're going to try driving it on the motorway, which so far is very easy and very comfortable. And we're going to try it on the twisty mountain back roads and see what it's like there as well. Now, I'm sure when they design these cars, they look at the competitor's spec sheet and say, we're going to do the same, but add 10%. Now, again, with the Xpeng, it's got a huge laundry list of tech on the outside. And I've got to try and remember what these 31 units around the car. So it has the two LiDAR units, those are in the bumper here. It has five millimeter wave radar, 12 ultrasonic radars, and 12 cameras all around this, this car. It's a lot of tech. And behind that tech is a computer which can handle the self-driving functionality, which will probably come in the future. It's got 508 tops of power. Tops basically means trillions of operations per second. And that's gonna be very important for the city NGP and the highway NGP, the uh, navigation guided pilot, which will probably come in this car in the future. So thank goodness we don't have that pesky third row of seats because it means we get a lot of extra boot space. In fact, we get 660 liters of boot space in here. And it means you can fit four sets of golf clubs in sideways, which is important for some people but perhaps important for the market that Xpeng are going after with the G9. Now, not only is the G9 focused on luxury, but it's also focused on practicality. And we have a frunk. So if I open this very warm piece of metal, in here we have a 71 liters of space, probably enough to fit a couple of shopping bags or maybe some golf balls to match the, the golf clubs in the back. So it's good to actually see they've got the frunk and the back uh, boot giving over 700 of litres of space in total. But I was speaking to the designers a few weeks ago and they have made some subtle changes to the G9, which the P7 doesn't have. For example, it's got these cutouts in the headlights, which make it look like it's winking a little bit. Now, it's important to mention that this is the four wheel drive dual motor performance version. This is quite nippy. Behind these massive 21 inch wheels, there's 717 Newton meters of torque. This is faster than some of the supercars when I was growing up. Now, because this is quite a tall car, the belt line actually is quite high, which means the window area and the cabin space is just a little bit smaller than perhaps some of its rivals. They've tried to counteract that with a massive skylight, which we'll see later on but it does mean it does feel a little bit compact inside for such a large car. So 
So where the magic really happens is in the driver's seat of the G9. So I'm spoilt here with these two 14.9 inch screens which controls everything. It's obviously got the voice control as well. So if my Chinese was good enough, I could control a lot of this car. Now, with the two screens, the passenger has control over some of the driving modes that I have. So, for example, if I put it into eco mode, the passenger can then put it into sports mode. That's a little bit annoying, but there's a lot more features in there that they can control as well. They can, you know, watch TV, play karaoke, all sorts of things over there. Now, the other thing in here, it's got this 5D kind of uh, experience. So there's this demo movie on here, which blows air in your face that lights up. It punches you in the back with the massage seats. There's a lot going on. And there's also smells which are hidden in here in these little containers. This one's Oceanic Melody. So the real benefit of all this bulk is that the passengers in the back get a lot of space. But not only that, they're treated to the massage seats and the air conditioned seats as well. And if I was someone like luxury legacy SUV, I would start to get very nervous because Xpeng are likely to be able to offer this probably for, we don't know the price, but about a quarter of the price of something, say, as a Range Rover, which is about two to three million RMB in China. If they can do this sort of luxury for that price here in China, then they're surely onto a winner. Maybe not with this generation, but maybe the next generation. If this is the direction they're gonna go in, in terms of luxury, then I think they're in for a good chance. Now we're in the, the dual motor high performance version and that comes with 650 kilometers of CLTC range. Now CLTC is a new way of measuring range here in China to replace the old NEDC standard. Now the good thing about Xpeng cars is they come with uh, CLTC and WLTP ranges on the dash. So I can see actually what the range should be um, uh, in WLTP. Now, when we picked up the car, it was pretty close to 500 kilometers of WLTP range. I can't tell you what the exact figure will be because it hasn't been announced yet, but what I can see in here is that's what the range is. Now on the, the single motor version, uh, which is a little bit more efficient, that has 702 kilometers of CLTC range. So depending on what flavor you want and probably your price point, you can get different types um, of driving profiles for the G9. For me, I don't really see much point in having a sports mode. This has five modes. Sports mode for me, especially in a car like this, is pretty pointless. But it does mean that you can accelerate from zero to 60 in under four seconds, which is incredible for a car which weighs 2,355 kilograms. So to move that mass that quickly is just amazing. So I think it's important that something that calls itself an SUV is good at both the S and the U. So the S is obviously sports. This car can do the sports bit, zero to 60 in under four seconds. It has that nailed. The utility bit, yes, it's quite practical. You know, boot space, lots of space on the inside, but can it drive up twisty mountain roads in rural Guangdong? Well, that's what we're doing right now. And obviously it's handling it very well. It's effortless in an electric car, any electric car. You know, you don't have to keep changing the gears. You don't have to, you know, worry about burning out the clutch. You just kind of glide up. Now, on a smaller country road, yes, this is a bit wider than most cars. So you do get a bit worried when a bus comes the other way. But in general, this is coping with these twisty roads fine. So there's three things I just want to point out at the back of the G9. Now the first thing is that they've got these fins up here. Now that is where the 5G unit is to give this the connectivity in the car. So I think it's really well hidden in both sides rather than the shark fin that most cars have. A really nice design detail there. Another design detail I quite like is on the inside of the wheels, this lovely cross hatching kind of pattern. I haven't seen that before. Looks really quite uh, upscale. But the most important thing and something which I can fully get behind is the charging. Now, this car does have a lot of gimmicks this is not a gimmick. This is fundamentally going to change how we use electric cars. So this is, has the 800 volt architecture within the car. And they've just announced that this car 
can add an extra 200 kilometers in just five minutes using the special 480 kilowatt chargers that Xpeng are rolling out across the country. That is fundamental to the success of this car and to electric cars in China and the world in the future. But you know what? I'm probably just nitpicking on what is actually a very good car. I just hope that Xpeng don't continue down the luxury SUV route forever and they sprinkle some of this magic from their current halo car into some of the other cars in the range. And also, you know what? People who are driving Range Rovers, Porsche Cayennes, they need an EV to switch over to. And I think something like the Xpeng could not, G9 could be a very good contender. So unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode from Guangzhou. We have all of our lovely Patreon and YouTube membership links around this video. And if you have been, thank you for watching.